Hiya, I'm Spud. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to play five, yes five, different strumming patterns on the guitar. Now in my experience, when people are learning chords, rhythm playing for the first time, they tend to gravitate towards the first rhythm that they learn, something that they feel comfortable, confident with. However, it can lead to you feeling a bit hemmed in and samey. You've probably been at a gathering, a little party, maybe over Christmas and someone goes, Oi, can you play this? I want to sing it. Firstly, you think, I better be getting paid. And secondly, you think, I only know that one rhythm. Everything sounds like half the world away by Oasis when I play it. We're going to change that. The progression that we're going to use today, dead simple, we're going to be using the same chords because we're focusing on the rhythm rather than the actual chords. Open position, G, C, D, and back to G. Just to sum up why this will be a good lesson for you, we're learning five different strumming patterns. Even if you know them, it's good to have them in a single place so you can come back and recap and go, I'm gonna use that one. Which leads me to the second point. You can use them when you're playing covers or even experiment with enhancing your own songs. They're in 4-4 four, four time signature, so we're thinking about timing and understanding um, how to read manuscript and rhythm. There are slightly different tempos, which is good, so it's not all just exactly the same. And we're using the same chord progression each time, so you can see how making a small change to the rhythm can have a big impact on the overall sound. Now, if you want the tab or the backing track for the example to go with this lesson, you can grab that on my Patreon and help support the channel. Let's get to it. first pattern one two three and four and down 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 up down up the hand is always moving DNA helix don't break the flow of rhythm that's our rule and it's also important that you understand the beats that you're playing on because if you've got a metronome on or you're playing with a drummer you've now got a concept of timing and you understand where you're supposed to be. At what time, don't be late, or I'll find you. Pattern two. One, two, and, and four, and down, down, up, up, down, up. I often find that it helps to speak these rhythms out loud so that we can understand what we're trying to play before we play it. And, um, What's different about this one is we're not playing on a downbeat, the third beat, but you still want to pass over, okay? Down, down, up, up, down, up, so that we don't break that DNA helix of rhythm. Don't break the flow. The third one. One and, and, and four, and down, up, up up, down, up. Very similar to the last one, um, but this time we're not playing a down on the second beat either. So you've got that one and, 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 four, and. Like I said, these kind of exercises are great for building that 
understanding of manuscript rhythms, etc. Number four. One and two, a three E and four, and a down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up. It's quite tricky, right? Basically, what's happening, we're now using quavers and semiquavers. So effectively, it's like double time to what we were doing within the same bar. And when you're using quavers and semiquavers, you tend to pair them with phrases like tea and coffee. Semiquavers, one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E. And it gets really difficult to actually speak the sentence. But if you do, honestly, it'll help you. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And then mixing that in with the one and two, a, three E and four and a you've got the flow of the rhythm and you should be able to then just like replicate it in the strumming hand. Pattern five, last one. I played it twice because I felt like it. It's one of my favorite ones because it's got this little specialist technique in there, string muting dampening, and it brings this percussive element into our playing, which I'm a big fan of. Basically, the rhythm goes one and two and three and four, but on the two and the four, we've got this. It's a combination of slightly releasing the finger pressure of the fretting hand, but you'll notice because we're playing open chords, that doesn't take care of all of the strings. So we bring the picking hand down as well to dampen, as you strike over with the pick and mix in releasing the pressure with the palm mute, you're getting that doubly muted. Two points of contact on a string is always going to mute better than one. The first thing I do to try and get this sounding good is play a G on an upstroke and then try and release the pressure of the fretting hand, put the slight palm on and try and get that percussive muting sound on the down. Once you've got that, I'd just rewind a little bit and I'd put the down before the up. Because we've gone down with that mute, the pick's in the right place to then go up, down, up, mute. Got a bit of beef to it, this one. You can play it with some power chords. Notice in that example, obviously I've changed key, but between the F and the G, I did a little split bar. I've already tweaked it, I'm experimenting, and it sounds good. And you can do the same. You can use them to your advantage. Have fun with them. Here's another one. There are ways that you can make rhythm playing like this sound more professional and musical. Maybe take a look at the accenting, picking accuracy, separating the bass and the treble. And of course, all of these ones were in 4-4. Four, four. Maybe we could look at 3-4, 6-8, 5-4, etc. If that's something you'd like to see in another video, then let me know in the comments below. And if you want the tab and backing tracks to go with this lesson and many, many, many other lessons that I've made, then you can grab them on my Patreon, help support the channel. And dare I say it, if you liked this video, consider hitting like, do us a favor, go on, hit like, subscribe, bell next to it, so that we can do this again sometime soon. Maybe you've got a mate as well who's struggling with the rhythm. You think, you know what? He was right, everything does sound like half the world away. Here, watch this. Share, share, share me videos, help me out. I'd appreciate it. Hope you had fun today. Until next time.
I need a catchphrase there, don't I? Until next time, I'll do a Neil Buchanan. Ta-da! Yeah.